Welcome. My name is Thomas Lefford. This is part two of Paid Preparers New Diligence Checklist. Uh, did part one the other day. This is part two. A lot of forms we've done in multiple videos just for time's sake. Uh, so I won't have to make them so long. I'll break them down into parts. Uh, make it easier to consume. That way, if you want to go over a certain section, you don't have to watch the whole video to be able to do that. So uh, part two. Uh, due diligence questions for returns claiming EIC. Uh, so 9A says, have you determined that the taxpayer is in fact eligible to claim the EIC for the number of qualifying children claimed or is eligible to claim the EIC without a qualifying child? Skip 9B and C, if the taxpayer is claiming the EIC does not have any qualified children. So a person who qualifies for EIC with no children on the return, you would click 9A, and you would either leave it blank or say no, more likely to leave it blank for 9 B and C. But if they got qualifying dependents on the return, then you would answer 9 A, B, and C, uh, yes. And so 9 B said, did you ask the taxpayer if the child lived with the taxpayer for over half a year, even if the taxpayer had supported the child the entire year? Yes. Did, they, did you explain the tax? to the taxpayer the rules about claiming the EIC when a child is the qualified child or more than one person type of rule. This done with people who normally were married and no longer married or separated uh, at the time with children and uh, they changed the rules when it came to dependents years ago so now you got to decide who gonna claim the kids uh, in order to get the credit EIC credit and so uh, that's a lot of big time discrepancy between parents uh, who won't claim them. Uh, and so uh, we'll get to that in another discussion, but uh, that's what 9C is about. Part three, due diligence, questions for returns, claiming child tax credit, additional child tax credit, and other dependent credit. The other dependent credits are new that came out last year. Uh, child tax credit, additional child tax credit have been around for years. And so it says, 10, have you determined that each qualifying person for the child tax credit, additional child tax credit, or other dependent credit is a taxpayer dependent who is a citizen, national, or resident of the United States? That must be yes. 11, did you explain to the taxpayer that he or she may not claim the child tax credit or additional child tax credit if the taxpayer has not lived with the child for over half the year, even if the taxpayer has supported the child? Unless the child's custodial parent has released a claim to exemption for the child. And then the next one is 12. Did you explain to the child, taxpayer, the rules about claiming the child tax credit, additional child tax credit, or other dependent credit for a child of divorced or separated parent? Uh, and then including any kinds to attach form 8332 or similar statements to return. So the 8332 is the statement they talk about where the custodial parent uh, relinquishes uh, the rights to claim the child to the non-custodial parent. And the non-custodial parent is the parent that the child doesn't live with for more than half a year. So that generally is the mother, if she's around, she has custody, and that's how that works with that. Next is, uh, next part is due diligence questions for returns claiming American Opportunity Credit. This credit here, it says 13, did the taxpayer provide subst substantiation for the credit such as form 298T and or receipts for the qualified tuition and related expenses for the claim of American Opportunity Credit? Uh, that question should be yes. Neither 1098T, which is a tuition statement that all uh, higher learning institutions should be able to make available to the uh, student. Uh, more and more are making them available online where they can just log into their account and, and download and print some still making it with their mailing to them. So I asked the client to talk to the school to see what way uh, the institution is making tonight AT available. Uh, and so that way if it's online where you can log to your account and get it, that's much quick and fast away. If not, you'll have to wait until they send it to you. And then the next one is due diligence questions for claiming head of household. Have you determined that the taxpayer was unmarried or considered unmarried in the last day of the tax year and provided more 
that half of the cost of keeping up at home for the year for the qualified person. And so December 31st of 2019 uh, is the day they look at to determine if the person is considered uh, married and uh, not married based on their status at that point. And so uh, you must provide more than 50 percent of the cost of keeping up whatever home or apartment or place you live at uh, to order to qualify for head of household. So there are head of household requirements that you don't have to have uh, when it comes to being single filing status. And so the next one says, like under that, every business certification, you will have complied with all the new requirements for claiming the applicable credits and head of household filing status on the return of the taxpayer identified above if you A, interview the taxpayer, ask adequate questions, contemporaneously documented the taxpayer's responses on the return, or in your notes, review adequate information to determine if the taxpayer is eligible to claim the credit and or have household filing status and to compute the amount of the credit. B, compute this, complete this form 8867 truthfully and accurately and complete the actions prescribed in this checklist for any applicable credits claimed and have a household filing status if claimed. Submit form 8867 in the manner required and D, keep all five of the following records for three years from the last of the dates specified in the form 8867 instructions under document retention. Uh, one, a copy of this form 8867 to the applicable worksheets or your own worksheets for any credits claimed. Three, copies of any documents provided by the taxpayer on which you rely to determine the taxpayer's eligibility for the credits and on head of household filing status and to can compute the amounts of the credit for a record of how, when, and from whom the information used to prepare this form and applicable worksheet was obtained by a record of any additional information you relied upon, including questions you asked and the taxpayer responses to determine the taxpayer's eligibility for the credits and or head of household filing status and to compute the amounts of the credit. If you have not complied with all the diligence requirements, you may have to pay a $500 penalty for each failure to comply related to a claim of the applicable credit or head of household filing status. Uh, and 15, do you certify that all of the answers on the form 8867 are to the best of your knowledge, true, correct, and complete? Yes. And so that's what that looks like. Yes. Everything on here should be yes. Any negative responses, uh, you must definitely have due diligence notes that's on cover why you even done return in the first place to cover you and help you to not pay those penalties. And so uh, that's it for 8867 paid repairs due diligence checklist part two.